every 120,000 years, the heart of our galaxy explodes with unimaginable force. A blast of energy tears through space at nearly the speed of light. When it reaches our solar system, the sun goes wild. It flares, it spits fire, it lashes out with storms that smash into Earth. The clues are still there, hidden in ice cores deep in Greenland and Antarctica. They tell us it happened before and it will happen again, and it would feel like the entire planet is trapped inside a giant microwave. Recently, scientists studying ice cores from Greenland and Antarctica have found out that Earth's climate doesn't just change randomly. It follows big, repeating cycles of about 120,000 years. Each cycle has the same pattern. First, the planet heats up really fast. That warm period lasts about 20,000 years. After that, things slowly cool down for around 100,000 years until it's very cold again. Right now, we're about 11,700 years into the warm period of the current cycle. If the pattern continues, the long-term direction from here is cooling. That means those massive ice sheets that used to cover North America and Scandinavia will come back someday. But they won't appear overnight. Ice sheets grow very slowly. Humans and animals probably have plenty of time to adapt. What's really dangerous, though, isn't the slow cooling. It's the quick heating. About 8,000 years ago, the big Scandinavian and North American ice sheets disappeared. That gradual melting lined up with one of the biggest mass extinctions Earth had seen in a very long time. Could the reason be massive flooding? No one knows for sure. But most scientists believe that many species went extinct completely due to climate changes and human activity. Now, some people have been trying to come up with alternative explanations of these facts. For example, to explain this phenomenon, researcher Paul LaViolette came up with an interesting idea. He noticed that a lot of galaxies sometimes throw out massive bursts of energy from their centers. It happens all over the universe. If that's true, then it makes sense our galaxy does the same thing, about once every 120,000 years. The scientists call such events galactic superwaves. Think of them like giant shockwaves of radiation that spread outward from the middle of the galaxy. As these waves move through space, they heat everything up. Stars react by flaring more than usual. And planets get shaken up in the process. But let's dive deeper into this hypothesized phenomenon. Some of the most powerful things happening in the universe are explosions from galactic cores. When one happens, it shoots out an insane blast of cosmic rays, like the energy of hundreds of thousands of supernovae going off all at once. And it doesn't just throw out particles. It also releases tons of radiation, from radio waves all the way up to X-rays and even gamma rays. By the 1970s, astronomers had figured out that the Milky Way's core also had these bursts from time to time. Every so often, it goes through an active phase where cosmic rays shoot out at levels way higher than normal. Our galaxy's center is called Sagittarius A and it's estimated to be about 4 million times heavier than the Sun. Some galaxies are even more extreme. Their cores can be billions of times more massive than the Sun. Interestingly, for a long time, some astronomers had an idea that galaxy cores only erupted every 10 to 100 million years. They also assumed that strong magnetic fields in the center of the galaxy would trap the particles, making them spiral around and drift outward slowly. Because of that, some scientists didn't think the Milky Way's core could ever hit Earth in any noticeable way. According to Paul LaViolette, when a galaxy's core exploded, the cosmic rays it threw out didn't just stay near the center. They can travel way out into the galaxy, even hitting solar systems like ours that sit way out in the spiral arms. In 1983, he also suggested that big core explosions actually happened much more often, about every 13,000 to 26,000 years, with smaller ones in between. Later discoveries seemed to back him up. 
For example, in 1985, astronomers proposed that Cygnus X3, a very energetic source of cosmic rays about the same distance from Earth as the galactic center, sends particles here moving almost in straight lines, nearly at light speed. After that, scientists also discovered that Earth got hit now and then by cosmic rays from X-ray pulsar Hercules X1, about 20,000 light years away. All of this seemed to support La Violette's idea. Space between stars doesn't slow cosmic rays much at all. And galactic outbursts could absolutely send shockwaves of energy across the galaxy, even to us. On planets like Earth, the polar regions get hit especially hard. That's because the energy from the star, like coronal mass ejections, ejections of plasma and magnetic field from the sun's corona, gets pulled toward the poles by the planet's magnetic field. It means galactic superwaves could easily explain why the ice sheets melted so fast and why mass extinctions were the worst near the edges of those sheets. Basically, the galaxy itself might be hitting us with energy bursts that kick off dramatic weather changes. The supporters of this idea think that right now there may be superwaves already on their way from the galactic center. If that's true, there's a small but real chance that one of them could reach us within the next few decades. Alarmingly, it doesn't always take a giant one to cause trouble. According to La Violette, smaller, less powerful superwaves happen more often. He also suggested that the Milky Way's core has flared up at least 10 times in just the last 2,000 years, with the most recent one happening about 700 years ago. In the past, people might not have noticed these weaker events. But today, with all our technology, even a mild potential superwave could be dangerous. The burst of radiation that comes with it would be way stronger than any gamma ray burst we've ever seen in modern history. It could knock out power grids, mess up satellites, cut off communications worldwide. The consequences may be even more terrifying. By the way, Galactic superwaves could also explain where a lot of ancient myths came from, like the ones about huge floods or fire raining down from the sky. If a galactic superwave really did hit Earth thousands of years ago, people back then could have remembered the chaos in the form of stories. It even gives some weight to the wild idea that Venus was once ejected from Jupiter. Normally you'd wonder, how could a planet possibly escape Jupiter's gravity? But with that much cosmic energy involved, the mystery doesn't seem so impossible. This also offers a possible answer to another mystery. Why ancient megalithic building techniques suddenly stopped. All those massive stone structures, some with perfect polygonal blocks, seem to vanish at around the same time in history. The theory says the intense radiation from a superwave could have sped up how mass and matter condensed. If that happened, then gravity and inertia would have increased. And even the chemical properties of materials might have shifted. That would mean building giant stone structures didn't stop because people forgot how to do it, but because the world itself changed. What was once possible and even routine could suddenly become impossible. For the people living through it, the change must have felt like everyone was getting weaker. Their ancestors' stories about strength and skill would sound like magic. In any case, Paul La Violette's galactic superwaves idea is seen as pseudoscience by most scientists. They don't buy it, because there's no real evidence for it. It goes against what we already know about physics and astronomy. And almost no experts in the field accept it. Critics say he cherry-picked data and ignored tons of existing research. And his claims about how galaxies affect Earth just don't hold up scientifically. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.